infrastructure teams and people on Fedora CI special interest group. So the outline of the talk uh, for today is uh, first I'm going to go through uh, Fedora hide gating overview and remind what it is and how it works. Then I will explain uh, how Fedora CI a special interest group is uh, uh, present in this picture and what we are doing. And then uh, we'll cover uh, how your test to the gate we have and how to add maybe the entire CI system to the gate if you happen to have one. So let's start with the first uh, item, the rawhide gating. Uh, rawhide gating is uh, not a new concept, but uh, it was uh, implemented last year, but I'm going to provide some brief overview. So first of all, for those who don't know what's Fedora Rawhide, Fedora Rawhide is a snapshot of all the latest updates of all RPM packages in Fedora. So this is our shared development space where we uh, deliver uh, updates first and then uh, it, these uh, packages go through stabilization phase and through beta and final release stages and then they go into the branched uh, named stable Fedora release. So the important feature of Fedora Rawhide is that it's a shared development space. So even though the packages which uh, we put into Fedora Rawhide have less quality requirements, they are development snapshots and they are development packages that you are not targeting the regular typical workstation. Uh, since it is a shared development space, it still has a certain quality requirement, which is basically that uh, a development of one package shouldn't block development of all the other components in Fedora Rawhide. And since we have thousands of packages, this is a very tricky question, how to make it so that one package doesn't uh, prevent uh, doesn't interrupt development of other components and these things can go and integrate nicely in this shared space. The second aspect of this, uh, why we started to uh, look into raw height gating is that catching errors at alpha, beta, final checkpoints during the release cycle is actually too late. Uh, it is very hard to find at the beta release that we have a list of critical uh, issues which prevent uh, distro from being released. And then we need under time pressure, very fast resolve it somehow, which may uh, cause huge dependency chains and, and a lot of trouble. So short and targeted feedback loops uh, are much better in testing and uh, provide much better um, uh, testing and development experience because as soon if if you test the change the moment it uh, you create it, you have much smaller scope of a change and uh, much easier debugging procedure. So raw height gating is supposed to address uh, these two uh, pain points. How it is it does that? So uh, by introducing the concept of a gate, uh, I find uh, that. Many people think about the gate as like doors open and closing. I find this association with uh, airport gate is closer to what we actually are doing here. Even though, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so um, the gate is not a door. It's a place where you sit uh, with your package until all the, verif all the verifications uh, are passing, and only once all the required checks are passing, the package can uh, proceed through the gate and land in Fedora Rawhide. So uh, this gate is implemented in uh, well, Kodri via, on top of Kodri tags in uh, targets. And uh, if you're interested in exact workflow, how this works, you can read the docs in, in the change proposal. So uh, this was implemented last year and announced in February at DEF CONF, I think, or maybe even earlier at FLOG. And uh, more to that, we have now two kinds of gate. Uh, we have single package gate where uh, each change goes through the gate alone. 
And we have a multi-package gate where if you want to update several packages in at once, uh, for example, we have a very uh, tight dependency on each other, then you can group those packages in one unit and uh, test and work with this change as, as a unit of uh, work and, and these packages from the group will pass through the gate together. So the gating framework is there, it works and it's nicely implemented in both here and supported in the UI. But the question which we have now is like, who runs the tests? Yeah, we have a gate, where are the checks and who creates them? And this is where CI systems come into play. So this is the small overview of how the gating process works to, together with a CI system. So we have Bothy service. Bothy is a um, database of all Fedora updates and uh, it's a, our main uh, instrument and main, main tool to work with the updates. Every time you create a new update in Fedora, both in Rawhide or in stable branches, you create associated Bothy update entry in Bothy, which describes what this update is all about. Then Bothy sends the uh, message into Fedora messaging uh, bus, uh, where it says that new update is coming, a uh, new update was created, uh, that's it. So once message lands in Fedora messaging uh, bus, we have multiple CI systems listening to the message bus, listening to specifically to uh, this type of a message. And whenever a CI system recognizes the message about a new update, it triggers its own logic to trigger uh, the test uh, which are relevant for this update. Once CI test system does its magic, it sends again a message to Fedora messaging bus with a test result. This test result can be passed, can be, uh, the test can pass, the test can fail. Test can also be uh, end with an infrastructure error, which is not, uh, uh, which means that we haven't uh, achieved, uh, we haven't gotten the result of a test. So result is unknown, there was some error on the way. All those messages land in Fedora messaging bus. And then there is another uh, database, which is called ResultsDB, which collects all those messages from all the CI systems, puts them into one uh, storage, and uh, you can query ResultsDB and to learn uh, all the tests relevant to this particular update, for example, uh, and, and their statuses. This results DB then uh, is used by Bothy to make a decision on uh, whether or not uh, to let the package go through uh, the, uh, the gate. But from the purpose of this talk, the important part is here, uh, here is that uh, we have a CI system, which role is, uh, and the role of CI system is to react on messages about a new updates coming, do the magic, and then send the message as outcome, whether positive or negative. Everything else is managed by the gating system. So the only thing which is needed to produce the task is here is to create an update, uh, to trigger an update and to send message with a result. And uh, one uh, important part about this picture and which I try to highlight here is that this is a distributed system. You can have as many CI systems working in this workflow as you wish, as soon as you maintain them. So uh, we can add CI systems independently and implement it through various tools. One of the CI systems, which is the default Fedora CI system, and this is what Fedora CI Special Interest Group maintains and develops right now. So uh, we uh, create and uh, maintain the engine which runs the tests for Fedora Rawhide gating infrastructure. So you may be seeing uh, this already in Bothy. Uh, this is a screenshot of actually my update I, I made a week ago for Fedora Rawhide. 
uh, if you go in any on any page about a package update in Bodhi, you will we can go to automated test results a tab and you will see test results there. So you see tests has uh, much longer names than a, a put in my picture, but they always have a prefix, which is a, a ID of a CI system. And then we, we have some name, which describes what this test is all about. So to give the overview of what Fedora CI resources we have, um, currently all, uh, all of this test execution is implemented uh, on top of Jenkins pipelines. We have one uh, old Jenkins instance, which is deployed to the uh, CentOS uh, cluster, to the cluster provided to us by CentOS project. It runs this uh, code build tier zero functional test. It has uh, no integration with Fedora account system and it has several other problems on the way. So basically it's on the road to be deprecated. To replace this old Jenkins, we have also two more Jenkins instances, like high availability and all of that. Uh, so we have uh, two different Jenkins master instances. One is deployed on top of the uh, Kubernetes cluster in Amazon cloud. And one is deployed again on top of the OpenShift cluster provided by CentOS, but now it's upgraded to OpenShift 4 cluster, which is new and which is uh, has more features interesting for us. So, on, from a point of resources, we have access to the cloud on Amazon, which means we have a lot of resources here. And we have access to OpenShift 4 uh, cloud of resources from CentOS. The amount of resources there is limited, but also quite a lot. Now, what we do with all these resources? This is the list of the tests which we are currently running. One of the most interesting uh, tests is uh, the DiskGit test, so-called. Uh, this is what you saw uh, from the previous screenshot. In essentially, uh, this uh, test scenario, it runs whatever it is described in the test folder in the repository of a package. We run, we take what, what's described there and we, uh, we run this scenario in uh, x86 virtual machine. So it's not a container, it's a full featured uh, virtual machine with Fedora installed in, in there and we just run scenario inside. And then we get the outcome of this uh, run and post a message to the message bus about the outcome. There are some links on how to uh, do that, uh, so you can read for more uh, more details from there. The other test which we're running is RPM Inspect. This is a static analysis tool. It uh, analyzes a uh, spec file on most common issues and errors. Sometimes it's licensing checks, sometimes it's ABI symbols. Uh, it uh, works not just on the RPM spec, but on binary RPM as well. Uh, and it also compares uh, a new update, uh, updated RPM with a previous version of the same RPM. So it gives you a, uh, it highlights when uh, file chain, uh, there are some important file changes like you get a new binary with uh, set UID bit, uh, which is potentially security threat. So uh, this is a tool. This, uh, the tool itself is on GitHub. So for more information, you can go there. So RPM inspect is our main example of generic test. It runs on every package, not on package on per package basis. Should we use RPM inspect instead of RPM lint? I think uh, they're not completely overlapping. So RPM lint is more about the form of the uh, RPM spec, while RPM inspect also goes deeper. So for example, it does the anubin checks and, and things like that. So uh, I'm not 
uh, familiar with the details in both tools. So maybe it's a good question to ask uh, to David Contrell, who is the main the maintainer of RPM Inspect, and he is uh, very open for feedback. So you can go to the GitHub repo and file an issue with this question. Uh, definitely something to consider, but I'm just not uh, sure about the details here. The other two tests which we are preparing currently, you may meet them already in the body interface, but we are still work in progress, is RPM Deplint and installability checks. RPM Deplint check uh, verifies the dependencies of a package, of a new package are satisfied in the current state of a repo. It's quite simple, but it catches some interesting errors sometimes. An installability check is uh, ver verification that uh, the package you've just built, you can install, uh, then you can remove it. Uh, you can also upgrade it from the previous version and then do downgrade the upgraded one back to uh, the old one. So these tests are uh, actively in progress. So we're working on them uh, right now. Uh, there are more ideas and tests uh, in consideration, but like as usual, resources are a, quest a problem, uh, people resources mostly, and uh, uh, definitely there are a lot of ways how to improve this part. If you're interested in uh, learning more about this test, then we have Fedora CI Special Interest Group. It's uh, uh, in, a wiki, in Fedora Project Wiki. We have Fedora CI channel on IRC, and we have also a uh, mailing list, uh, which is called CI. Now, uh, I promise to explain how you can run your tests, actually. And uh, this is where it gets more interesting. So the uh, question to you as the audience is, uh, like, do you have ideas for the tests uh, which we might run as a generic test for all Fedora packages? So first of all, like, if you have idea how you would like to test one specific package, then the easiest way to uh, add such a test is uh, to contribute this test to uh, the disk git repository of a package in into that disk git test workflow. Obviously, to make it work, you need to first talk to package maintainer and uh, see if package maintainer agrees with the idea of the test. Then you contribute it uh, to the uh, repository via pull request. We recommend to use pull requests for such work because uh, on pull requests, we run a preview of a gating test and we post result of the gating test, uh, of the disk git test in the pull request interface. So you kind of know before you merge if the test which you contributed actually works. If you have an idea of a generic test, which might be, uh, I don't know, checking build requires and not just requires like RPM Deplin does, or checking uh, consistent, consistent, consistent versioning between some packages, whatever logic you feel like you would uh, like Fedora to have uh, enforced, then uh, if this uh, check is simple enough to be run in a container environment, which means it's not exactly that simple because uh, we run virtual machines and container environment as well with no problem. So uh, if you have a test which can be run as a, as a script in virtualized, containerized or virtual machine environment, then uh, we now have resources and possibility to implement it all as a part of Fedora CI generic checks. So to implement such tests, you can just go directly to Fedora CI SIG. Uh, what we would need to make it work uh, is uh, the test script itself, uh, which would be run on a certain container image. Once we have that, uh, we add the Jenkins uh, wrapper around this script and around this container, so it becomes a Jenkins pipeline. Uh, you can create your Jenkins pipelines on your own if you would like. I just take a look into the doc and clone, for example, RPM Deplint repositories and do the same thing, but for your test. Or you can come to uh, Fedora CI SIG and uh, we can work on that together, definitely. 
So um, one of the highlights of the current state of the things is, of in Fedora CI is that uh, we are refactoring our Jenkins setup, and these new Jenkins is now allow, give us more flexibility in how we work with uh, Jenkins pipelines. We are now connected to Fedora account system, so you can re-trigger jobs just by using regular Fedora account. But also you uh, have a more simple approach to writing the pipelines itself. So we uh, decoupled a lot of things and now uh, writing pipeline usually means specify the pipeline metadata, specify the container in which the pipeline should be running, and specify the script which the pipeline should be running. And the rest of it is the library functions, which will be just like triggering and sending messages when it's all done. So we're open to such work and we welcome all ideas which come uh, from the community uh, to this area. Now the other part about uh, uh, how to add your tests to Fedora or Hide Gating is how you actually can add your CI system. This use case is more interesting for people who maintain, let's say, their own hardware labs uh, or certain specific environments which you cannot share and, and you cannot re-implement on top of basic OpenShift cluster. If you have a dedicated hardware sitting in a lab somewhere in a dark room and you want to test in advance that let's say update of Fedora kernel or update of Fedora Libvirt doesn't break your stuff on that particular ha hardware. Uh, what you can do <clears throat> is uh, you can maintain your own CI environment, CI system, and then you can onboard this CI system to the Rawhide gating workflow. Because as I showed before, the only job of a CI system is read the uh, message from the Fedora messaging bus and send the message with a result. Of course, there will be logical assumptions on CI system so it can vote in Fedora, in Fedora uh, packages. So uh, if you vote with a test result but don't provide logs, we can do anything about this. So such a vote is probably useless. Uh, thus, if you want to have a CI system voting in Fedora, it can be a private CI system, but it needs to publish some of the debugging <laughs> login information in a way that Fedora community can read that and can understand what's going on. Of course, additionally to that, you need to uh, talk to people who, which you're supposed to test. So we approve and agree with the concept of the testing and they will not just ignore the test, test results you're posting. And uh, you have some technical uh, things you need to do, like choose a name for CI system, the ID, which will be the prefix of all your test cases. You need to add um, some triggering mechanism and, and to request uh, the right to send messages back to Fedora message bus. So reading Fedora message bus is open for, for everyone. Sending to Fedora message bus is restricted. So once you set up the system, so it reads the messages, posts the test results somewhere, you have a history of uh, actions done by the CI system. You can request then uh, the access to Fedora message bus, and then all those test results start to appear in body. We have a more detailed documentation on that. So based on the interest in the audience, I, I can answer some questions. Let me know if you want to talk more about it. One important note about all of this setup is that uh, we do uh, separate the part of running a test and providing the test result and uh, the part of making this test result blocking the update of a package. It can be done in totally independent way. Y you can 
add tests, you can run them. They will be visible in the, in the interface, will be reported. But then unless package maintainer explicitly agrees to block package updates on these test results, these tests will not block in the package from, uh, from landing in Fedora or Hyde. So it will not be considered as a required check in the gate. Configuration of a gate is a separate thing. It lives in a separate configuration file in the disk git uh, repository. And uh, we have a doc about that. I wonder. Yeah. And uh, basically, every packager has a possibility to write down for his uh, or her package that uh, this is the list of tests which, I, which should be blocking for my package update. And this will uh, add this uh, enforcement a part to the whole process. Currently in Fedora, we do uh, we don't do any global enforcement on any level. So all the tests we run in Fedora CI are not are uh, providing feedback, but we leave it to the maintainer uh, to choose if this test will be blocking or not. Some of the maintainers already chosen uh, that. Uh, this git test uh, or RPM and spec test to be blocking, but uh, not all of uh, all of them. And uh, yeah, not as much as I would love to see. Uh, people are still are not quite familiar with the system. So by refactoring and by cleaning up some documentation pieces and uh, we code and, and opening it up for contributions. We expect to get more traction and more understanding from the community on what's going on there. And yeah, uh, one note here is like, even the very, very simple, yeah, which be looks like an absolutely obvious thing, actually can be very important. So as a Red Hat uh, OSCI uh, person, uh, we, we tried this uh, sometimes and, and we saw that uh, tests make a difference and um, you don't need to build too much logic at the beginning. You just can start with something smaller and grow into a larger set of tests uh, or, or, well, once you are evolving in that area. So um, to be honest, this was faster than I expected. So I wonder at which level are the audience is and do you have more questions on, on Fedora CI, on Rawhide gating or on specific implementation details? Feel free to ask. So I'll check. How long CI system have to either report results or be skipped? We don't have any limits right now. As I said, like we have gating framework, we have CI systems uh, pushing uh, results to message bus and results to be aggregating them. And this system, uh, like it, need, it needs to learn certain uh, corner cases, needs to add certain limits, but it needs to grow out of the usage. So basically right now we don't see uh, requests and problems with uh, long test cases. That's why we don't introduce limits. Any result that is available before the next row height compose? So let's put it this way. You create an update. Uh, this is uh, uh, your package of version 1.2.0. We run tests for this particular update. And so we send a test message which says, package X of version 1.2.0 passed this RPM deploying test. So this result will be valid just for this package. And this means that this package can land into Rawhide. Once the package lands in Rawhide, result is not going anywhere. It still is the entry in results DB, but it's attached to that specific build uh, which you tested. If you create a new package update of the same package and, and you bump version and it's now 1.2.0-3, 
when uh, you get a new test run, a new test result specific for this build. Previous test result is not valid for this build anymore. Does it explain the question or not really? Okay, good. About uh, how long CI system runs, uh, question. Uh, we have an example of certain packages. Of course, our favorite packages in on CI are GCC, kernel, tech, li uh, tech life, yeah, or te tech leave, and, uh, and there are a couple more. So I think GCC test cases run for more than 10 hours right now. So uh, we originally had a default limit of four hours per test for these Git tests, but uh, we added the feature into the configuration option so that uh, limits can be extended to whatever uh, time you wish. Basically, our idea of this um, time limits is that if packager, if package maintainer is okay with waiting, we don't mind running uh, with this test for that long. So we we try to give more possibilities to package maintainer to navigate this part while it works for package specific tests. Of course, for global tests where we consider eventually adding installability check, for example, as a global policy, then uh, in that conversation, we will need to figure out the top limit, which we must as a uh, Fedora CI system provide before we actually enable this as a global blocking test. So it's definitely not going to be just our decision to one day to enable the test and, and, and everyone is blocked. This, this will be a discussion and uh, conversation about limits, about uh, reliability and, and all of these parts. And one more thing I forget to mention is that uh, I, I talk about like blocking and non-blocking tests, but uh, if we look at the implementation, there's actually no blocking tests at all. So uh, every blocking test, even if it's really a blocking test, which package maintainer decided to run for this package and block on that, uh, every test result can be waived. Because again, uh, we want to keep the control on the maintainer side. We expect that maintainers uh, in certain cases uh, where we just cannot predict uh, some corner cases and what's happening with the test and in, in this particular combination of packages, we uh, give uh, the freedom of making a final decision to the maintainer. So what will happen in such case is that you add, add your test as a blocking test and you configure your repository, uh, your package updates to block on results of say, RPM deployment. Then uh, you uh, create an update, it fails the RPM deployment, and uh, you see that uh, RPM deployment is just not getting the right information because this package is uh, slightly different from what we expected, and there is a huge explanation why it still should go into Fedora Rawhide. Uh, then in this case, you can say like, I'm going to ignore this test result for now and let this package in. I will deal with this package, with this uh, test and this package later if needed. But uh, like, I, I know what's happening and I know that it's okay. And I know that package can go forward. So even blocking tests are not completely blocking in our setup. Any other questions? If not, then uh, again, we are welcome everyone at our Fedora CI RC channel, mailing list and Fedora CI special interest group. We are open to ideas. We are open for contributions. Our code is on GitHub right now under Fedora CI uh, organization. 
So if you're interested in uh, Jenkins stuff and in uh, things like that, uh, DevOps uh, managing Kubernetes clusters, come talk. We have interesting conversations about it. And um, yeah, we're open for adding new tasks to us and we're open to help you to uh, make your CI systems testing Fedora updates. I think there will be could be a lot of hidden benefit for Fedora from having such environments. Thanks everyone. And uh, see you on all other sessions, including social and antisocial and whatever it is. <laughs> see you.